It is the ultimate 2021 stock pick. It is a SPAC. It is a Biden trade. It is an electric vehicle trade. And one of their customers happens to be one of the largest companies in the world, Amazon. Amazon has a five-year deal to buy up to 2,500 electric delivery vehicles from this company as a part of Amazon's commitment to be carbon net neutral by 2024. Uh, by 2040, I believe. Oh, and Amazon could actually buy up to 20% of this company as a part of that deal. Oh, and this soon to SPAC company is also known for making EV school buses. And the Biden Clean Energy Plan calls for 500,000 zero emission school buses by 2030. Now, they are also good at Photoshopping. Their electric vehicle trucks look really neat on their website, but Unlike the company that we love to hate, Nikola, this company has actually delivered vehicles to Amazon, and they have a history of making those electric school buses. Curious? Today on Dumb Money, we're going to reveal our million-dollar investment in the ultimate Amazon-backed Biden EV SPAC. This is Dumb Money Live with Chris Camillo, Dave Hansen, and Jordan McLean. Streaming live on YouTube, we are Dumb Money. Hey there, Dave here along with Chris and Jordan. We are Dumb Money. Welcome to the show. Chris, Jordan, it, it pains me to go deeper into margin to invest in a SPAC, especially after the blank check ticker has nearly doubled since they announced that this company was going to be merging with it. I, I looked at it back then. It was in late, no, uh, late November, and I decided not to invest. Are you guys ready to reveal what this company is? Yeah, man. It's it, it's it's the Lion. It's Lion Electric, dude. Hear the I Lion roar. Done. Lion Electric. And they are merging with a blank check company Northern called Northern Genesis, Genesis, Genesis Acquisition. Acquisition. Yeah. So their, uh, their current ticker is NGA, and they're going to change it to LEV, the Lion Electric Vehicle ticker. So I'm, I haven't bought it yet. Chris, I know you're what? in. Jordan and I were talking about it this morning. What? Um, I'm in. You haven't bought it yet? I haven't bought it. Dave, I haven't felt this way about an EV company since that investment in plug this summer. And I was just telling you guys, I put a quarter million plug. I'm up a million dollars in like six months on plug. So you're already a okay? million dollars into Lion. I was looking to do maybe a quarter million dollars, but then I was thinking about it. Instead of doing um, additional margin on something that is not marginable, what if I were to do some deep, deep, deep in the money options? I was looking at maybe like it's trading around 25 right now. What if I did 15 options that are like around 11 and change right now? Okay, well, let's not worry about half, the trade half the yet. money. Let's not worry about the trade yet. Let's just break it down. Because there's let's so do. much to break down here. We could go in so deep on Lion. This is... But hey, before we go super deep into the Amazon part of it, I want to talk about the bus. Canada. The bus part. Wait, what do you want to talk about? Canada's Canada doing. is nuts. Like they're, um, they're, all their uh, governments are nuts for these, you know, green energy initiatives right now, and they're pouring tons of money. I don't know the landscape very well, but I've read a few, um, you know, I've read a few articles on what they're doing as far as like clean energy goes. And I feel like they're all in. I could see this blowing up as far as just being a school bus, even in Canada. And guess what country is about to go crazy for <laughs> all everything green? I mean, we're on the verge of like going from not caring about the environment to like blowing everything into dude, it. Dude, dude, guys, the you're talking million, about The half Canada? a billion school bus initiative that we have as, as our new green energy plan under Biden We'll, we'll do great things for this company. And we were talking before the show, there's another company that makes school buses that also is doing this. What, what was that company? Bluebird, Bluebird. They're like the Bluebird. old school bus company. Yeah, they're doing it. They have electric buses, but Lion is the EV company. So, guys, half a million school buses. Break down. Half a million school buses. Biden is going to say during his inauguration next week, okay, I love Inauguration Day. I love it for trading. I love it for trading. Like he's going to say, I think, because he, he's said it multiple times before, he has this initiative. He wants all half a million buses to go electric by 2030, okay? In fact, yeah. he wants every bus, every bus in the country, school or not, to go electric, but he wants to start with the school buses. He is going to make that happen 
in the US of A, George, Canada, you're right. Everything you said about Canada is right. But dude, we are like exponentially bigger in Canada and we are about to blow them away when it comes to supporting well, EV That's schools. what I'm saying though, is that this, but, so this is a company that's producing in Canada. I mean, they, I feel like they could do everything that they could do to fulfill Canada's needs, let alone what America's gonna need. And Jordan, here's the deal. They're, they're, they are acquiring a manufacturing facility in the United States yeah. right this second. They could announce it any day. They said they will have, once they, they're looking, they have a bunch of sites that they've located. They haven't pulled the trigger on one, but once they pull the trigger on it, it's going to take them 12 months to revamp that site for their EV bus and truck making ability, okay? So they're 12 months away, basically, more or less, from manufacturing in the USA. You know why that's important? You know this administration is gonna want and prefer USA, they already said this, they want USA jobs as part of this bus, EV bus initiative. Yep. Lions got you, man. They're gonna be here in the USA. Lion is a Canadian buses. company that is specifically, part of the SPAC is, is raising money so that they can expand their US operations. By That's the way, it. they got legit, their management is legit. They have legit management. They understand the space. The ownership of the company has roots in this space. Um, this is not, well, let me just say, this is not Nikola. And we haven't even gotten into the truck part of this, but this is not, this is what everything that Nikola could have been and should have been that I guess some people thought they were. This is the real deal, guys. This is the real deal. Yeah, I agree. You know, there's and actually Jordan, you were saying that happened today, too. You're saying, though, in Canada, uh, the way governments like to spend money and buy things, they were paying crazy amounts of money for, for things. And so it's like, if, if you're starting with government spending and government initiatives, it is going to be even better when, when it comes to margin for new technology, right? Right, and this is all government expenditures. This is local governments. Well, I mean, you know, maybe some private schools, too, but mostly, mostly you know, local governments. C can we talk about their proprietary technology that they have, though, at Lion, with, when it comes to battery, uh, like redistributing the power back to the grid? I don't know if you guys have read about this, but Lion essentially has been testing um, proprietary tech for school districts to be able to sell the battery power back into the grid during peak usage times, which is interesting because school buses are used in the morning and in the afternoon. Then they all get docked, okay, at like 5.30, 6 p.m., right, which I believe is, is one of the peak times for energy usage. And they have a system to allow school districts to actually generate revenue, okay, actually generate revenue by selling power back to the grid during peak times. That is a value add bonus, and it's exactly the type of thing that gets school districts excited and the U.S. government excited because it's like, oh my gosh, this is great. We're we're it's actually giving them point. a way to yeah. actually earn money back, right? It's, it's that's what's going to give them an edge over the blue bird, on, the in the school district. What? It's easier to get that approved through a school district when you're like, oh well, this is going to cost us this much, but guess what? We get to generate revenue from plugging our buses in overnight. It gives them an edge over Bluebird, who I also own because you can't not own a school bus company right now that makes electronic you school buses. You own as of you like can't. Uh, can't 12 minutes ago, because right before we went on, you bought some. No, I, yeah, well, I had them this morning. I bought, I bought some Bluebird. Jordan bought, no, I bought the, no, I bought a different stock. I bought this other, <laughs> I bought I the other EV bus you bought, company. You bought the, um, and I think people are mentioning in the comments too, you bought Arclight Clean Transportation Corp which is in an agreement to purchase, um, what is that, Pro, uh, somebody old, Proterra. <coughs> Proterra, Pro who make buses. I think they used to be in Carolina, now they're in, Nor now they're in uh, Golden, Colorado. But they're, but they're bus bus. They've, not... they're, they've also been in business for a while, I think 2004, so they're a real company. Yeah, so these are all real companies, guys. Um, listen, I'm not gonna, we're not we're gonna talk about the truck side in a second. The truck side is actually maybe even more interesting to me than the school bus side. If I don't, can I get through this episode without buying? I'm buying more right now. I can't. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to have to do it, dude. I, have so to I do saw it. people I asking for the ticker here in the chat. And so this is it. It's NGA, Northern Genesis Acquisition Corp. That is the company that this Lion Electric is going to be merging with to turn into a new ticker, which I, I believe is going to be LEV. But right. uh, today... I'm uh, in the more. process of potentially buying some NGA or some options on NGA. And the, the 
rumor is, or the news is, that they're going to do this, this SPAC merger uh, in Q1 of this year. So um, that kind of gives me an idea of the... Uh, Dude, these guys the just front ran my trade. I should not do that. I should not say I'm going to buy more. I just put it in over the, over the ask, and you guys already front run my trade. I'm never doing that again. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a lack, of, lack of trust. But I'm an idiot for saying it. I got it's like also 400. That you don't know what you're doing until the moment you do it. <laughs> I already you own 1.2, 1.3 million. Plus, I own uh, another 100k of options because you know, unfortunately, I don't like this. Actually, they're going to be on Jim Cramer tomorrow, guys. I hear, I hear they're going to be on Jim Cramer. They're supposed to be on last week. They Lion. got booted off because of the DC stuff. Uh, yeah, it, this company, Lion, is going to be on Cramer's show tomorrow, and I don't like that because it's too early. I like them to be on Cramer's show like in a month or two months. But uh, I hope he doesn't screw the trade up. Uh, <laughs> it's possible. Anyway, I did buy some they could, calls they because... They, you know, they, they basically have pre-announced what their uh, capacity projections are for 21, 22, uh, you know, all the way out to like 25. So it's kind of a known entity. It, it, well, it is, but listen, here's the piece that I think is starting to spread more and more um, amongst the investor community. It's not the school bus piece. By the way, I still think the school bus piece, guys, people are underappreciating the Biden uh, support for electronic school buses. And I said the same exact thing when Obama got into office with electronic medical records, okay, guys? I traded CERN before the inauguration. I traded CERN during the inauguration. I traded CERN after the inauguration. And this article started to hit like two or three, four days after the inauguration. They hit even more one to two to three weeks after the inauguration. And the information dissemination was still happening weeks after. So now listen, we live in a digital world now where I don't think it's going to take that long for people to catch on to this. But these inauguration trades have always worked for me in the past. Uh, CERN Chris. was one of my biggest trades back when Obama took office. I just absolutely crushed it. And in fact, it crushed it for years, for years after that. This is the type of tailwind that you dream about. You dream to have this tailwind in as an electric school bus. Have the entire US government, uh, the Canadian government, and probably the government of every single country in the world about to back you. And it's not like there's a billion companies making electronic school buses, right? Lion yeah. is like the leader. They're the leader in this space. And let's talk about the other half of the business. It might even be more exciting than the e-school bus yeah. side. Yeah, this is whole, ridiculous. Yep. Let's the whole do trucking it. trucking business. It's, it's huge. It's huge. And Dave, can you while, show while the... you were talking, I have a, you know, the grand idea that we should uh, consider live streaming the inauguration speech. Um, I'm open to that. During, that. during that speech, is when you hear initiatives. We've we've dissected all of the Biden campaign speeches and the videos of him, and we kind of have a good idea of the trades that we put on when he won. But now, you never know what he's going to say on Inauguration Day. That speech, like you say, was pivotal last time for all sorts of different things that, that moved and continued to move after. Let's live stream it and try to pick out some key things that, that are said that we perhaps weren't expecting and try to tie that to some stocks in real time. Dude, done, man. Done. Done. But Dave, before we talk about the, the uh, Tune in class... here on Dumb Money Live on January 20th for a very special episode. All right, that's our promo. Done. Before we talk about the class six and eight trucks, can you go to the Lion Electric site? Can you pull that? Because they, they yeah. show them so beautifully and they have a video too that I think would be awesome to show, if you can. Uh, it's just kind of the unveiling video on their homepage of the yeah, truck. Hang on one sec here. Oh, here. I had been, this is like, I'm so disappointed it took me so long to get in this trade, guys. I was tipped off a few weeks ago by a friend who has crushed it in the EV space this last year. I told you, this guy, he's, brilliant. He's made over $100 million in 2020 just trading for his own account, most of it in EV, and he's in really deep on these EV. There it is. There it is. And, and, and is I that wish I would have gotten its own, They appear to have a driver in that, so it actually appears to have an engine and not just be rolling down the slope of the uh, stage the way certain <laughs> electric vehicle companies debut their vehicles. Um, 
Dude, this is so the real the real version of Nikola. Now, by the way, let's just talk about this. The valuation of this company, I think it was a, it's backed at like two billion or supposed to back like two billion, yeah, like which 1. means 9. that right now it's like at five billion, I think. Yeah. For, forget about what NGA says it is. Yeah. When you really look at the fully diluted share count, I imagine it's like at five billion right now or, or close to it. Nikola, Nikola, okay, is at six point eight billion. They have <laughs> no electric school buses in production, okay? They have, the, I mean, let's talk about what's going on with the truck side of this business, guys. Who has signed up? Who has bought 10 of these trucks, first of all? And it sounds like a small well, number. It's a Who's small bought? number, but it's Amazon. Well, and- that's, how you, that's, how, that's how they do it. They got to they tiptoe in, and then they'll grow that as, as long as things go well. Two have been delivered and they've tested them. So Amazon is driving and testing and critiquing two of their trucks. And That's while great. they're doing that, they basically now uh, contracted for the right to purchase up to an additional 2,500 trucks over the next five years. 500 a year five, over the next five, five years. years five years, but you know year. what? More than that, Dave, more than that, because in that agreement, Amazon also uh, mandated that Lion keep 10% of their manufacturing line reserved just for Amazon until 2030, okay? No problem. If I'm Lion, I'm like, we can do that, right? We can do that. In fact, I'm going to tell you the biggest thing that these guys have going for themselves right now. You know, our background, my background specifically, as you know, is sales. It, I'm, I've been a sales guy my whole life. I love sales. I love uh, I love institutional sales, enterprise sales, and I always put my sales hat on and go. If I'm selling for Lion and I'm walking into school districts and I'm walking into every single truck purchaser of these class uh, these class six eight trucks, what do I want to tell them? I want to tell them. Guess who our guess who our key customer is. Guess who owns part of our company? Because part of the deal, guys, Amazon could own what, like 16 to 20% of Lion uh, with their warrant deal uh, that goes up to 23, 24 bucks a share over the next you know, half decade, which the, I think they had a similar deal with Plug and look at Plug. Um, guys, how great of a sales pitch is that? To say, well, we've been vetted by Amazon and they're purchasing thousands of trucks from us yeah. for Amazon. And by the way, they also own part of our company. So you kind of know we're going to be around 10 years from now to ser- you know, service your trucks. Like that is gold, right? It's gold. Yeah, absolutely. It's gold. It's, that's all I care about. Well, I mean, there, I, can you imagine? I mean, aside from that, just that's the best test bed, right? Is to have a big company like Amazon actually use your product, tell you what's right, tell you what's wrong, and then you can iterate from there. It's awesome. But can we look at some of these trucks? Did you go to the product page, Dave, on yeah, line six just, and eight? Let me just show you. We, we talked a lot about the school bus, but that's the very traditional looking uh, yellow school bus that they make. And then uh, this is what they have coming out in a, like, uh, what do you call that? Like a normal bus? Yeah, and they're starting with the shorter form, uh, like the shorter base buses. But I know that as they increase efficiency, these guys will be, and this is a big part of the Biden initiative, guys. The Biden initiative is not just for school buses. They're starting with school buses. They are transitioning to all buses. will be EV, okay? And I know that Line's going to get into all full-size buses as the technology allows them to go there efficiently. So this is a big, this is a company that I think we're going to be talking about, guys, in 2030. I think we'll be talking about Lion 10 years from now, nine years from now. So here's a look at their current product lineup. The Lion 6 and the Lion 8 are those kind of box trucks. Those are are the Amazon-style trucks. The Lion C is this school bus over here. And then this navigation is not going to let me scroll while I'm also sharing it on the screen. Apparently, that's awesome. If you so. click on the six, the line six and eight trucks, it will kind of uh, not line energy. Go back to the product yeah. page, and then just click on the lion truck image, and it will let you see all their trucks. Which is pr- they have a pretty sweet lineup. Oh, I can pre-order one right now. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do with that, Dave? I don't know, but it seems <laughs> seems like I should. I could, buy, I could buy a school bus. Does it tell you how much, like, how much would it cost to own that school bus? Hey, Megan, for uh, 
a two thousand dollar deposit, I can uh, get get my, on the waiting list for a school bus. That's way more comfortable than your van. You you, you can calculate with that. Can you imagine the life I could have in this school bus or this like city bus looking thing? <laughs> Megan, can in? you drive this? <laughs> I don't know where she went. <laughs> Dave, for those of you all don't know, show. Dave is Dave is doing a tour of the South, and he's in Savannah in his silver van that I'm sure Megan would prefer to be sleeping every night, but you're forcing her to stay in hotel rooms, right, Dave? Uh, you know how great it is that we're we're doing van life, but we have uh, very we slept in the van a couple of times, but <laughs> I'm in an Airbnb now. We had a nice hotel for ten days. Um, I think we're 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 going to be go staying at a national park for a night, so that should be that's nice. in the van, right? Yeah, sleeping in the van. Hey, Megan. It's a state park, It's a state park, she says. Um, do, you, do you want to see the school bus? Is it a schoolie? No, it's not, it's not a school bus. Come look at this. Could you turn that into a camper? Are you going to drive it? Uh, no, you drive it. You can drive that, right? <laughs> you know he doesn't drive. Man. I don't. I make her drive me everywhere. <laughs> she would have to get a class, whatever, like, what kind of license do you have to have to operate one of those? I don't know what kind of license you need. All I know is that I know her enough to know that she could probably get that license in two or three weeks. Yeah, yeah she would totally do and, that. And be probably one of the best drivers in the country, okay? <laughs> and look, look we, bring, we bring Chimichanga with us. Yeah, he could have his own little area of the bus. He can have like his own thing. I think you should do it, Dave. <laughs> you get your you own, should. oh yeah, you can hang, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so right, this is how we do the show now. You know, I, I, the chat actually loves it when uh, Jimmy's on the show. I have always, <laughs> I always see lots of feedback. Okay, now back to the stonks. All right, so we here we have. I honestly, I don't know what else we can say. Yeah, this um, navigation is not going to let me uh, go to anything else while doing the share mode. I, so. Do not like the concept generally of getting into these overhyped SPACs that have had massive run-ups. But this is one situation. I've been thinking about this before the show. I'm going to say it, guys. I'm going to say I, I might eat my words at some point in the future. It's been a while since I've said this word on dumb money. This is a high conviction trade for me. It's a high conviction. This is trade. where I need a sound effect where a big graphic comes in that says high conviction. Well, if I were in just, my studio, we would uh, have that. It just is, guys. It's a high conviction because it has so much going for it. It's so real. It has it has the hype factor of being an EV bus company. It has the U.S. government for the next four years being the ultimate tailwind. They have a proprietary edge over the competition in the space. They are a leader in the space when it comes to EV buses. Um, I feel when it comes to these class six and eight trucks. They are obviously a leader to get that Amazon contract. And listen, to, to be partnered with Amazon on this, it's gold. They're building out a US manufacturing facility that should significantly increase their production. Um, everything's going for them right now, absolutely everything. They are overhyped, I get it, but if there's one stock I don't mind getting in that's been a little overhyped and moved quite a bit, it's it, it's lying, man. I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I feel like I'm, I don't have enough. I feel like I don't have enough. I feel like I should, I should get closer to $2 million in this position. I'm at like really? 1.3 right now. But with my options, and I might just, if these options work out this week, they expire Friday. And the reason why I bought the options, I never trade Jim Cramer, okay? But he is going to have them on tomorrow, it looks like. And this stock doesn't need Cramer, but I think if it helps, get more eyeballs on the actual real story. NGA is the ticker, guys. You're asking in the comments, NGA. If it helps get more eyeballs on this, then 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 l let it be. Um, I think when pe once people kind of start to do their homework on this company, they're gonna realize it's it's not fluff. This is the real deal. I love it, man. I'm in this. I could see myself it's staying a in this company deal for, for a couple though. years. Yeah, this is, this is not one of those like overnight success stories. This is a long-term investment. Well, Dave, I had that CERN story, that Cerner story, CERN, C-E-R-N, in the back of my head, and I st that trade just kept going and going because when you have that tailwind of government money, it takes a really long time from the point of someone like Biden saying, we are going to make every school bus electric to actually getting legislation passed through Congress 
to actually subsidize that process and to mandate that they are electric, and then to actually have the manufacturers to give them enough time to ramp up and to actually sell and place and accept orders from the market. It's a multi-year process, guys. This doesn't happen in weeks and months. This happens over years, and I think to have a company that can play equally in that space and in the mid-size commercial truck space and the urban truck space, which you know is going to blow up the next five years, guys. You know it's going to blow up, right? Yep. I feel like the only issue for Lion is they're going to have to do another fundraise. They're going to have to expand further. Like, I'd like to see them to, raise because, more money. Because their, their projections are not high enough for where this company could be. Yeah, right. I, 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 they're I gonna agree. they have to raise more money or figure something out to okay, so be able to expand as big as up, the, their market through the merger, and then if it stays up, they can do a capital raise. Okay, someone asked a great question. Um, they asked where will Lion get their batteries from. It's a great question. So interestingly enough, a Lion actually placed an order for I think two hundred and thirty million dollar order for batteries. I. I don't have it sitting in front of me. Um, it's in one of the articles I sent you guys, but it was the like the largest order they've ever placed. And at when they placed the order, people were kind of confused. They're like, "That's a monster order for them to be placing." But then when you start to dig into the Amazon deal and you realize how large that deal is uh, potentially, it, it all makes sense. So they, it seems like they do have an ample supply of batteries uh, to fulfill these orders. And to fulfill the at least the near term Amazon, uh, you know, capacity issue. So I, I haven't gone in too deep there, but I, I think they're going to be okay. Uh, I was looking. Yeah. I, I can't just offhand find that. Uh, I, I do remember seeing the uh, information about when they did place a battery order. Can't find it offhand. But and by the way, I do. Uh, I did buy Bluebird, as I said. Uh, I think Bluebird is the. Uh, you know, they're the old school bus company. They've been around, I think, for 100 years, manufactured. I think they've made over half a million buses. And by the way, the bus market, for those of y'all that are interested, I think it's about 35,000 buses, school buses, a year. Uh, that That's the demand for school buses. There's about half a million of them on the road. So, yes, over the next, you know, theoretically, it would take 13 years to replace those school buses. But because of this EV mandate, you're going to have to go overboard, right, in terms of manufacturing production to catch up to get these buses on the road like the government's going to mandate. So yeah. I think it doesn't matter whether you're Bluebird or whether you're Lion, you're going to be at max capacity for the next five years producing as many EV buses as you can possibly manage. I think this is a situation where it's not about selling, it's about who can handle the most production. I think Bluebird... Who can fulfill the orders. And this is, yeah. this is a company with a proven track record of making school buses at a time when we need a lot of school buses. Yeah, so Bluebird is a company I want to own right now. Uh, I'm going to own Bluebird through this process as well. I don't own nearly as much of it as I do Lion. Lion is certainly the sexier play here. Uh, and you know, listen, th th this is just, this is a small part of the EV space, but I think it's a really interesting part. And when you combine it with the urban trucks, uh, these kind of class six, class eight trucks, that is a monstrously big space, guys. And for those of y'all that don't understand that space, we're not talking about delivery vans for Amazon. Now, Rivian, uh, it's, it's also one of my absolutely favorite EV companies that unfortunately the only way to invest in Rivian is to invest in like Ford because Ford owns a pretty substantial piece of Rivian. Now, Amazon does as well, but I think Rivian moves the needle more for Ford than Amazon. They make most of the delivery vans for Amazon. And Rivian is a, I can't wait. Why are they not spat? I guess they're, it's so easy for them to raise money in the, on the private yeah. market. They don't need to spat. They, is that the they deal? That's what they need right now. Yeah, they yeah, raised um, it 25 billion. Why do they, they don't need to spat? Well, they don't Question need a on SPAC. Bluebird. But, is it, is it but, Bluebird Corp BLBD? Is that the is that the one? Because they're I, up like twelve percent so. today. I think so. Yeah, they're up. They're up pretty big today too. Wait, so that's not Bluebird. No, Bluebird is B. Oh wait, yeah, you might be right. I, don't I think, know. I think I, that, that, because I'll, there's a Bluebird bio. There's several yeah. Bluebirds out there. Well, I, 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 I don't I, know that this it's is BLBD, the right one. Dave. Bluebird Corp. BLBD. So yeah, that's yes. Lost my train of thought. You know, I was gonna, I was 
I went into this episode trying to be really calm about this, and it, you got you hyped yourself up on this. <laughs> that happens sometimes. You start talking about something, and you get more excited about it while you're explaining to me why I need to consider it. Well, listen, you know, we started this year saying there's no way we can have a repeat of 2020 because, like, everyone that watches the show knows we we're up. I was up 25 million last year. There's no way I can repeat that. And now we're finding some of these trades. I still don't think it's doable, but I think we can have an eight an eight digit year if we can find a couple more companies like this. I I think. I think companies like this are just going to have the entire, everything going for them. They have the tailwind, they have the hype, and they're real, right? What more can you ask for in EV stock? That's it. Oh, by the way, we are going to do an entire episode on Chamath, and, and I, I got excited about him and his stuff yesterday only because I believe that a lot of the newbie Robin Hooders out there are looking at Chamath like the next Elon Musk, and I think no matter what he does, People are going to buy up his SPAC. So I bought a little bit of all of them. Anything he touches, I'm buying. Does that mean that I think he's a genius? No. Does that mean that I think that these SPACs are actual good SPACs? Not necessarily. In fact, I had a conversation this morning um, with someone that reaffirmed what my suspicions were on a couple of his SPACs. Uh, that I, I don't think they're as great as everyone thinks they are. I, I think there's a tremendous risk actually in SoFi. SoFi could be something really cool, but there's a lot of risk there as well. Uh, I'm really not a believer in, in his uh, Virgin Galactic SPAC. Uh, you guys know that. We were in it for a little bit because it got hyped and we followed the hype, but I, I just, it doesn't matter though. You don't have to believe in something when the entire world feels the way they do about that guy. I can't not put my money in everything that he does right now for the entire year, all of 2021. I don't see how these companies fail in 2021, right? Because the companies that he is spacking are these pie in the sky, 10 years away, right? Before they're going to show what well, they're capable of doing. It's kind they of like we also year. invested in the uh, Bill Ackman uh, Pershing Square spac. Not having any idea what it's going to be, but because we think that that guy is going to do something good with it, right? Yeah, it's a I mean, similar philosophy. It's like you're picking some brand name spackers at this point, right? It's it's almost you know it almost is is a it's a, it's an evolution of of how social arb investing has kind of unfolded. I mean, social arb is always about identifying change and information that the market didn't appreciate early, and investing in that point of uh, you know, information imbalance, and then exiting the investment at the point of information parity, which is when the rest of the market has the information that you are trading. So it's really not about following hype stocks. It's not about, you know, putting your money behind people just because the rest of the world is in love with them. But I think people are not giving enough credit and the changes that people are believing everything this guy says, right? They're just thinking he's a genius, the same way they look at Elon Musk. So. I know that. I think we've come to terms with that. Has the rest of the institutional market come to terms with that? I'm not so sure. Uh, they might at some point this year. But everything that he touches cannot be proved wrong in 2021. Now, 2022, 2023, 2024, some of those SPACs might fall apart, right? But I don't see there being a lot of risk from the fall apart this year. Yeah. And that's why I'm throwing my money across all the IPO stock, I, IPOD, IPOE, IPOF, all of them. I got, I got cash in every last one of them, but not nearly as much as I have in this no, that's, Biden, uh, EV, Amazon SPAC, Lion Electric. Yeah, and back and to yeah. Lion Electric, a uh, few questions, and we kind of did touch on this, but uh, what is the story with Amazon? Are they getting help them? Are they partnering? Amazon's agreed to buy vehicles up to 500 a year for five years, uh, potentially more, and has the option through a bunch of warrants and stuff to um, potentially own up to 20% of the company by buying the company. Yeah, and it's, it's really the deal is in Amazon's favor, right? So Amazon negotiated a deal that they can do whatever they want. They can buy, they can probably not buy. I don't know what the penalties are for pulling out or how far in advance they have to get their orders in. It was uh, described and by the way, as the right to buy, not yeah. an obligation. I also think, guys, uh, a future driver for this uh, stock, and I think a lot of times when these companies are spacking, I think they're going to probably hold back a little bit um, to release some of this news. But at some point, they are going to likely announce 
the degree to which Amazon placed a hard order for 2021, 2022, right? Like when they did how that, many... the, 10, the, the 10 that have been ordered, the two that have been delivered, everything's been very transparent. We're actually seeing yeah. that they're making these things, they're delivering them and that Amazon's, you know, checking off the boxes saying, yes, we received it. And this, this meets our, we're gonna order some more now. But if you look at the battery order that Lion placed, there's no doubt in my mind that the, the you know the likelihood the probability is extremely high that behind the scenes Amazon has indicated that they're going to take them up on that first year order for 500 trucks or whatever it is or some portion of it the company has not announced that they have not confirmed that yet and when they confirm that that's yet another you know it's more confirmation in the company uh, I think that's still ahead of us I think there's just a lot of big positive announcements coming either from Biden the U.S. government or electric uh, excuse me, um, Lion Electric when it comes to orders, whether it's Amazon orders or they had what they had 300 orders from 300 separate companies that are ordering trucks and buses from them. I think that number is going to explode this next year when you see this legislation hit, because as soon as it hits, every school district is going to try to get in front of it, right? They're going to try to get in front of it, um, as well as the kind of said the urban truck uh, buyers. So yeah. I love it, guys. High conviction. Oh, by the way, we're not financial advisors. High conviction for us, not for you. I already, I already flashed that on the screen once. Because, Zero uh... conviction for you. Zero. <laughs> Zero conviction for you. Uh, we don't know your risk tolerance. I know my risk tolerance, and it's I can lose it all tomorrow and be totally fine. I don't care. I don't you care about my risk tolerance. You would totally not. That is a lie. That is a huge lie. <laughs> if you lost it all, we've seen what happens on bad days for you. You're depressed. You barely even I remember to log in for the show. Two thirds. I can lose two thirds tomorrow and be totally fine. That's sixty-six percent. So unless you're willing to say that you can lose two thirds of everything that you own and be a hundred percent fine, uh, you're not in the same boat as me. And regardless, we, we wouldn't rececommend a stock even if we did know your risk because we're not financial advisors. That's not, what, it's we not what we do. It's about process and learning and strategy and information, surfacing opportunities, vetting those and opportunities. How to think but, about investments and learning about things. And and that even you know from from the whole range of people who who are familiar with like how stocks move. This uh, Alex is saying stocks usually drop after Jim Cramer. If it does, I'll double down. That's an interesting investment strategy that might work for some people, might not work for others. Uh, to people who are a little more new to it, like Jamie here asking, what is a SPAC? Well, a SPAC, that stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company, and it's basically a company that is listed on the stock market with the pure special purpose of eventually merging with another company to bring that company that it's merging with public. So Lion is a private company in Canada and Lion wants to be a public company in America. And rather than go through the traditional route of you know, basically doing this roadshow and selling it to investment bankers and, and figuring out what it's worth that way, they're just saying, you know what? People are going to want to invest in this. We will simply merge with a an existing ticker symbol and become uh, a public company that way by merging with a special purpose acquisition company. And I and I saw another question earlier asking what happens when the ticker changes. So right now we're, we've been talking about the ticker as this NG. What is it? I, I don't even know. What is the ticker of this? NGA. NGA which doesn't matter because it's going to change. If you buy it today, it's in GA. Yep. And when it changes, you just, your, your brokerage account will change the symbol. And the symbol will, I believe, be LEV for Lion Electric Vehicles, which is a cool yes. ticker. And we love- By cool the way, tickers. Romeo, um, if you want to know the battery supplier, thank you for reminding me who it was. It's Romeo Systems. They are another SPAC. Uh, they are the battery supplier uh, to NGA. And they trade under M R M G. No, R M O is right. You what? Is it not R M O? Uh, did they already switch over? I don't know. Romeo Power. Yeah, they already switched over. Yeah, so they're they're Romeo Power R M O. Let me just make yep. sure, Jordan. Yes. Yes. And for for those tuning in late, and I I was not. Uh good at remembering it because it doesn't matter, but Northern Genesis Acquisition is that special purpose acquisition company. And so it's NGA. That is their ticker symbol. For Lion. For Do not buy it. 
on our recommendation because we didn't give a recommendation. We're right. telling you that it's high conviction for us. All right, guys. Um, we have like a hundred other high conviction reports that we need to sit down and analyze in our Discord channel. If you haven't been to the dumbmoney.tv portal where we have all of our Discord information. By the way, everything's free. We don't sell anything, guys. We don't have a program. If you're watching us for the first time, we don't have a course. We don't have mentoring. We don't charge <laughs> money for anything. If you want to buy some cool merch, these sweatshirts, sweatshirts are amazing. Dominey sweatshirt. We don't even we don't even make money on that. We just put that in for what it, what they charge us to make it. Uh, we make money off of our portfolios, off of trading. We collaborate with our community on trades all the time. Uh, thank you, community. You ha you've done a great job. There's so many amazing high conviction trade reports in our Discord right now. I'm looking through them. Uh, Dave's on vacation, so we're not even going to have a show tomorrow because he's traveling. But Thursday we'll be back. Uh, at some point in the next week, we'll probably pick one or two of those high conviction reports to We feature could even have a weekend show. show. I think I'm going to be in a stable location over the weekend. So you never I'm know. I'm in. Dude, so you've dude, got I'm to in. subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications, set it to all so that you know, because we try to do the show at uh, 12 Eastern, 11 Central, but that doesn't always happen. So set those notifications to all. That's how you find us. This is what the Dumb Money TV site, if you scroll on the Dumb Money TV site, you can find all the places to subscribe us and like us and share us and do all those things. Join the conversation on our uh, Discord group. And there's that merch store. You can see uh, Chris and I modeling yeah. some of our fine wares. <laughs> Roginator, I'm not selling my Amazon. I'm keeping it through Amazon earnings unless I change my mind. Uh, but right now, everyone that, if you've been watching, I have $9 million of Amazon and I'm holding, even though Amazon has been a tough hold the last couple weeks. So. And the dog's name is Chimmy, as in Chimmy Changa. Uh, that, I saw that somewhere, but that was not the question that went up here is that question. So yes, uh, uh, Kitty Claus Catherine Johnson wants to uh, know, this is Chimmy Chonga. She goes How's by Chimmy. Box, box? How's our Bok Box uh, spec doing, guys? Have you checked Sorry. on that lately? I'm wearing a lav mic and she's probably uh, trying to talk into I, it. I right. forgot the ticker on that, Jordan. Do you remember the ticker for Bark Box? STIC. STIC. How's that doing? I might buy more if it's dropped. And it has, it's down to 14. I might pick up more. Um, that, that December web traffic on BarkBox was super impressive. One of the things that we do is we share kind of web stats inside of our Discord. We have a whole channel for that. And BarkBox, right next to Collector's Universe, might have been the most impressive December lift in uh, web traffic to that site. So yeah, I might pick up some more BarkBox. Guys, I don't have any more money. I'm out, dude. I'm out. See, I, I got 22. into BarkBox briefly. It was not That was not high conviction. That, that was so low conviction for me that once it went up a little bit, I was like, yeah, I'm done. That's enough for me. I'll buy some more. I'll buy some more. I paid um, for a BarkBox subscription probably for life with that trade, so that's that's all. And she, I had she a wire like money toys. into my daughter's uh, Ameritra TD Ameritrade account. She's 10. Because she's buying BarkBox today. So I might buy some along with her. Come oh, you know what else she's buying today? She's buying a Lion Electric. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you, you told us yesterday that whatever <laughs> the stock is that we're talking about today, she was interested in it. And uh, yeah. she, was, she had high conviction on that one. I should have probably bought hers before we did the show and the stock went up. But oh well. <laughs> yeah. She's late right, to the game, man. It. She's late to the game. I found it, I found it first. So... I got a much well, yeah. better price than she did. She was she was ready to trade it yesterday. You you're just too slow in wiring money. You might have to no. actually uh, <laughs> sell her some of your shares. No, let me tell you what happened. I tried to transfer and do an internal transfer on Ameritrade from my account to hers, and it wouldn't let me because I'm so levered. I basically maxed out margin. <laughs> it will not. It's like you have no cash to put in her account. So I'm like, I'm not selling stock. So I literally took her cash from she has a little box of like bills. I took it and then I just I'll just wire money from my bank over. It's going to be an extra day before you get your your get in. Anyway, <laughs> I'm out, dude. I'm delirious. Right. I, I've been up way too late studying these deals. Uh, we will be back um, probably Thursday. We're done, money. Subscribe, like, share, notifications. That's all. Bye, bye. <laughs>